your girl Kiki Reader and welcome back to the Always Reading Book Club. So we're going to jump into a new series today. Um, this series is by the author Jacinda Wilder and it's got three books in it. Um, Alpha, Beta, and Omega. And so today we're going to jump right into Alpha. Um, our main character is Kiri St. Clair. Um, she's about 26. And it opens up with her getting fired. So her position, she's a temp. And the position's being streamlined so they no longer need her. And so the guy's letting her go. And so she's already two months behind in rent, three months behind on her electric bill. And she's like, please, like, is there any way, like, she'd been doing, doing such an like, awesome job. She's like, is there any way, like, I can keep my job? And he basically let her know that the only way she could keep it was if she possibly sucked him off. And so he comes up to her and she, like, hit butts him <laughs> and, like, kind of breaks his nose and there's, like, blood everywhere and then she runs out of the office and um, she gets out of there. Um, and it was just like, oh, my gosh. So they start to give us a little uh, background on Carrie. And so Carrie's father was murdered about seven years ago. So when she was 19 and her mother is a schizophrenic. And so she's in a home. And she has a younger brother um, that's in college, even though she herself is in college. But it's just taken her so long because she's had to work multiple jobs and all kind of things to try and like stay in school. So she's still in school as well. She wants to be um, like a social worker. So when she gets back to her apartment, um, there's an eviction notice on the door. And it says she has three days to pay or she's got to get out. And she goes to flick on her lights and those have been shut off. And then the only food that she has in her kitchen, in the, in the fridge, she has like some, a package of Raymond noodles. There's some ketchup, some two week old Chinese food and a little bag of baby carrots and a single cup of black cherry Chobani yogurt. And that's it. And so she goes through her mail just kind of looking at all the other late notices that she has and she sees a plain white envelope and it just has her name written on it nothing else so she opens it up and there's a check in there for ten thousand dollars so there's nothing else in the envelope the check was made out from uh some it said vri incorporated and in the memoir portion it just says you so, of course, she calls her best friend, whose name is Layla, and she tells her what's going on. And so Layla's like, come on over, you know, stay as long as you need, you know. And um, she didn't tell her about the check just yet. She just kind of told her, you know, I'm getting evicted. The lights are off. So Layla's like, come on over. So when Kyrie gets to Layla, she pulls out the envelope and she... Um, tells her she needs the money but she's like super scared to cash it because what if it's from the mob and then she owes them so Layla googles the VRI incorporated and nothing comes up that's really concrete um just a lot of uh a lot of names have uh, a lot of companies have that name and it doesn't help that there's only like a PO box listed so she can't find anything um so she goes ahead and she decides to cash it so next day they go she cashes the check and uh she gets a thousand dollars back cash and so after she paid her tuition her rent up for the past two months and the current month and also for next month and her, all the other little bills she had about two grand left that she could stretch you know but she gave Layla a thousand because she knew Layla you know wasn't making the most money either Layla lives with um her boyfriend Eric but Eric is a he basically just smokes pot 
sells pot and plays video games so she kind of knew she needed the money as well so she gave it to her um to help her out and so she's like all right so we'll just try and make this money stretch until she's able to find another job so it's the middle of the next month she goes to get her mail again guess what there's another white envelope and when she opens it it's another ten thousand check in it but this time the memo section says belong so now we got two words you belong so her first thought was like oh shoot you know you know but her friend lay was like listen you already owe ten thousand. you know you're already too deep you can't pay that back so you might as well just go ahead and dig yourself a little deeper (laughs) so she cashes that check and um she gets her ac fixed some other bills caught up and Uh, She found a job at Outback working as, um, it's not, it's a hostess. She was a hostess. And um, even though she has this extra money, she kind of puts it back as a cushion. She's still working hard. She's still trying to get extra hours. Um, She busts her butt to try and become a server. And she did get trained as a server. And then the next month, another check comes again for $10,000 ten thousand dollars and in the memo section it says to me so her checks now say you belong to me (laughs) so she's like okay i'm keeping these checks who do i belong to (laughs) so she goes and visits her mother who is in like a home because like i said she does have schizophrenia and initially it was kind of manageable while her father was alive um because she would take her medicine but then like once he died she stopped taking the medicine and it just became too much like she would lock herself in the room destroy things like i mean just a whole problem and her brother cal you know was a lot younger and she kind of had to take on those responsibilities you know making sure he got to school making sure he was fed all these different things and so when she comes her brother cal though even though he's now an adult and he's in college he doesn't come back home they live right outside of detroit and he goes to school um he goes to columbia he does not come home at all he'll call (laughs) every blue moon maybe she'll get a text or something from him but that's it like he wanted to get as far away from that chaos as possible and she can't blame him she understands it you know um so she goes to see her mother and her mother's having a freak out you know she's having an episode and they wind up having to um she didn't visit her that long at first she couldn't even recognize her daughter she was like you're not her you're lying to me you know she just had a whole episode and so for the next year so it was a full year that um she got checks for ten thousand dollars that's 120 grand and so after those first couple of cryptic words that was the only message you belong to me that was it she none of the other checks had any memos on them they were just the checks for the ten thousand and so on the one year anniversary of the first check there was a knock on her door and she was in the shower and so when she came to the door there's this big guy there (laughs) he said his name was Harris and he said you know put on your nicest outfit put on some nice lingerie I'm here to collect you and she's like what are you talking about you're here to collect me and he said did you cash all 12 of those checks for ten thousand dollars she said yes he said do you have the money to pay it back right now she says no he says well then i'm coming to collect you're coming with me and at first she tries to put up a fight but it's kind of like you kind of knew something was going to happen if you're getting this money there's not this free money you're getting something's going to happen and so she goes and he has specifically said put on the blue dress and the nicest lingerie you have and she at first her mom was like how the hell does he even know that i have a blue dress 
but she's like you know what at this point whatever so she goes she puts it on um he tells her he's like i'll pack up your stuff she's like well how long am i going to be gone and he says indefinitely so he packs up all her stuff she goes she puts on her dress um makes herself up and they head out and they go to on their way to the airport um she calls Layla to tell her that she's gone away and Layla's like oh my gosh the check guy finally came for you (laughs) and she's like yeah she's like and so she's like well I mean you do what you got to do to pay off that debt that's 120 grand and she's like I'm not a whore (laughs) she's like well you might have to in order to pay off that debt (laughs) so she's like you know call me as much as you can let me know you're okay and she's like all right i'll do that and so then they get on she gets onto a private jet with harris and um he just tells her you know listen i know you're scared he was like but don't be your situation is changing it's improving it's, it's going to be for the better i promise and she's just kind of like okay you know so when she lands she doesn't know where she is initially but then as she makes her like you know way through she can figure out she is in new york city and um she sees a breathtaking view of it and so harris leads her down to an underground door and it's going to this uh big building and he's like okay you got to put a blindfold on and she's like what why do i have to do that and he's like this is a part of it you got to kind of comply with it like you got to put a blindfold on and so she's like okay you know like at this point what's her choice you know she goes home she's got to pay 120 grand and she doesn't have that money so she puts the blindfold on and he leads her through the door and um she heals she hears a sultry and a sexy warm voice and he's like you know welcome Kyrie. you know i'm so glad you're here and he's like i'm not going to tell you right now who i am he was like but i will tell you i promise and he was like you know i'm not going to do anything bad to you he was like anything i do to you i promise you'll enjoy it and so she asked him his name again and you know she asked him his name and, and of course he's like you know there's no need to know my name not right now he's like eventually you know again i'm gonna tell you and she's like well what do you want me to call you sir master like i'm not into you know what is that and he's like no i don't want you to call me that like i'm not a dominant (laughs) this isn't like some sexual dominatrix thing going on you know and she's like okay okay and he's like um but i own you and he's like not only do i own you but i own your mother and i own your brother um, I've made sure that everything that you've needed has been paid for. And she was just like, what can she say? Because he did. That money, you know, went a long way. It helped pay a lot of stuff. So she just kind of stuck. And he lets her know. He's like, I'm not going to penetrate you or do anything like that to you. He's like, you know, I promise, you know, you will beg me for it before it's over. And she's like okay whatever you know so when he said the word like obey because i guess he wanted her to obey she didn't like that word and that's probably another reason why she kind of felt like he was probably one of those you know dominant type of situations going on and so um even though she doesn't like the word but she is turned on by just the voice of this man and um he could tell because he you know he's pretty good at reading people so he's like i can tell you're turned on your nostrils are flaring and i can tell that you're turned on and so he was like i can see that there's this fire in you and he was like and that's the same fire that made you break mr edward's nose and she's like wait a minute how do you know that so the mystery man that's what we got to call him for right now um he goes on to let her know that you know again he will reveal himself um because he does have a secret that he will tell her um but he's afraid it'll make her 